that's really small. So you've probably noticed in some of these videos that I've been making that we have some drone shots. And the drone is really cool, but like everything else, there's a learning curve to it. And it's not that easy to fly and do video at the same time. So the drones are actually to help tell the story. That's all the drones are for. If you don't have a story, getting cool drone shots don't mean anything. The story is what's important. The same with your life. So everybody loves a great story, right? What makes a good story? If you read a story, is it the character? Is it the plot? Is it knowing a little bit about what's going to happen? Or not knowing at all about what's going to happen? The mystery. Today is sort of a mail time day. I'm not sure. I just wanted to comment on something. Um, I thought about it because <clears throat> today in the mail I got something that I've been looking forward to. If you've noticed in my, in my videos, I'm trying to add more aerial shots to help tell my story about living here and what's around me when I'm talking and all these things. Sometimes aerial, aerial shots can be really, really good as far as telling a story. And I started out, I guess, about a year and a half, two years ago? Two years ago. And I bought this Phantom. It did the job, but I had a big problem trying to fly the thing. I mean, I got it because I wanted to do the photography, the aerial video. And so this was a big challenge for me to try and fly it and keep the direction of the, the video, the shot, the way I wanted. You almost need two people and then they actually came out with a, a phantom uh, copter that has two controllers so one person can fly it and the other one can be adjusting the camera and doing the camera. Because if you try and do a shot, say, a circling something and you're, and you're doing this and you can get the copter to, to pretty much do a circle that's not that hard, but if you try and do that and keep the camera on one position, it's almost impossible. So I became really frustrated with this as far as doing photography. It's a great, it's a good little copter, not a problem. But then I changed to this 3DR Solo. Now this thing is the, this thing is awesome. And I got it because of the ability to do these shots, these video shots. They're already pre-programmed into the software. So it made it really, really easy to do this. But there's a learning curve to any kind of, uh, anything new. And so I was trying, well, let me show you what I tried to do one day at the beach. So let me tell you how I wrecked my solo copter. Family day at the beach, the copter's flying around. Oh, it's awesome, everything's great, got some good shots. But I had sand on my hands, so I didn't want to grab the copter because you can land a solo right on your on your hand if you wanted to. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but you can. So anyway, my brainstorm was don't land it in the in the sand, you know, because the prop wash will blow the sand up into everything, not a good thing. So I said figured, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna land it on here on the top of this wall, which we have probably from the, the tip of my, my fingers to my elbow. So it's a pretty good landing pad I thought. But I don't know, you probably can't tell at the beach today, but there's a lot of wind usually out here, and there is today as well. So anyway, I started bringing the copter down, and it's floating around with the wind a little bit, you know? But I thought, I can do this. <laughs> so when I hit the button for the touchdown, which is automatic, it just touched down and shut off, two of the, the, the legs on this side missed this, just barely, and of course, what happened? The copter flopped over and fell onto the ground running. And uh, 
wasn't good for anything. wasn't good for the props, wasn't good for anyway. So that's when I had the problem after that with the gimbal. So it's my fault completely. It had nothing to do with solo. So there you go. I tried to land it on that little that little ledge, and it ended up where it wasn't supposed to. And I think I knocked the 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 cable out of the side of the GoPro camera. So I picked it up and and I shoved the. It, I didn't have an image, I think, so I shoved the cable back in, and from that point on, I, I started getting these funny things happening with this. The the gimbal would hum sometimes, and the video was only green. You could see, you could really see, but it was just covered with green. And so I tried everything. I took the thing apart, which probably shouldn't do for warranty reasons. Um, but over here in Thailand, it's, it's hard to get these. I couldn't just send it back to the, the factory easily. It would have cost a lot of money. So anyway, to make a long story short, I had broken the gimbal. I Actually, this cable is broken. Now you can look in there with a strong, strong magnifying glass and there's one little pin that's out of place. Probably when I shoved it in, I didn't shove it in correctly and, and, and messed it up. Plus, I scratched up some of the props at the same time I did all that. But this thing was awesome. The shots were so cool. And then they upgraded the software to make even better shots. So I love this C3, uh, 3DR Solo. But again, I had an issue. So actually, I was able to buy replacement parts in Thailand. So I just got these in, in, the, in the mail. So I got a set, new set of props and a new gimbal. So I'm really excited to get this thing back in the air, especially with the new software. It'll do so much stuff. So you're going to be seeing some incredible shots if you haven't already. And um, so this was sort of my mail day today. I only have one other package here. And so um, not sure what else we got here. <laughs> Speaking of coincidence, check this out. Now, the, one of the things is, because I'm the talent, so to speak, if you talk about video talk, I'm the talent. So i got to do what I'm doing now, and which is speak, try and keep in my mind what I want to say, and present it in a way that you're going to get the most out of it. So I've always said to, to Nat, you know, it would be really great if you could set up these shots and fly the copter and do some of these uh, copter shots. And she's sort of hesitant because it's an expensive little thing to, to if she messes up. So I understand all that. So I ordered something for her. And guess what? Speaking of copter, today's copter day. It came. So this is a little VX 10 wd TX. And it's put out by some company. I forget what the name of it is. It's a mini. It's a mini little copter. And so Nat's got a practice. Nat has a practice copter now. We're going to get her to, to, to learn how to fly the copter, and she's going to learn by using this. Check this little guy out. Now, you see how big this is, right? You see how big the 3DR is. And I can see why she's intimidated to, uh, to try and fly that around. But we got something new for her now. Check this out. <laughs> is this the cat's meow or what? So I'm, I'm really anxious to get this up in the air. Now, it's not going to give me HD video. It, it, it does have a camera in it, though. And it's got the little controller. Or you can try and control it from a smartphone, from an application. But from what I've watched other people do, that was sort of a challenge. It didn't work as well as this controller. So we'd probably use the controller. But I'm anxious to see what this is. And this is an indoor copter, too. You can fly it around. So I'm thinking about, OK, what can I shoot with this flying around? Because you can fly this under furniture. You can fly it through plants and stuff. It doesn't go real far or for very long. But we're, this is very cool. So Nat, learning curve. <laughs> But this is her this is her training wheels before she moves to that. Ah, so the story. I hear so many people complain before they get to uh, their retirement age, when they're planning their retirement, and after they've taken the retirement, they're still complaining. To me, remember the idea of the story. To me, we're the authors of our own story. If you don't like the story, change it. Change the plot. 
Change the total idea. Change the location of the story. Change the characters in your story. Change whatever it takes to make the story the one you want. One thing for sure, and that's when you hit retirement age, your story's going to change whether you like it or not. Well, I shouldn't say that. Some people continue to work. Might be because they need the money. Might be because they're afraid to change the story. We have, I have members of the member site, a couple of them that have actually started writing books, actually writing stories. That's a big change in their story as well. And they're really good at it too. So this is really good. So think about what, how you want your retirement to be. What is the story? If you could close your eyes and imagine a story as you are the main character in that story, what would it be about? Where would it be located? What would the characters be doing? Sit back and take yourself out of the picture emotionally. In other words, look at yourself in the picture and that way you don't feel the emotion so much. Because fear might come up if you actually put yourself in these pictures. But excitement could as well. But sit back, think of yourself, where do you want it to be? It might not be Thailand, it might be some Latin American country, it could be anywhere. What's the location? What's the setting? Who's in your life? Are you a, a lone traveler or are you if, you... if you retire and you go move someplace just for the money, what kind of story is that? That's no story where you're just going to go somewhere because it's cheap. You're going to be an unhappy character in an unfamiliar place. So one thing I can guarantee you, and that is there's going to be some changes along the way. The storyline, the plot, the characters, or something. But hey, if it didn't change, that wouldn't be good. I mean, if you go and watch a movie or read a book and the characters stay the same, there's no development of the characters, there's no challenges for the characters, there's no change in the storyline or anything, there's no, there's no twists or turns. Would you like that? No, of course not. That's not what you'd like. You want changes because it keeps things interesting in your story. Same with your life. You've got to be able to be flexible. You've got to be able to change and adapt. Really important. But if you can do that, then you just change the storyline, change the location, change the characters, change whatever it needs to be to fit what you want the story to be about. Remember, it's your story. Today's copter day, drone day. I lost it. I don't see it at all. Well, we lost our copter. That didn't take long, did it? Well, looks like I too am gonna have to drain the swamp. Well, that didn't work out so good, did it? Oh, I thought that was gonna be a great shot. Oh, man. I have a question. When you think of something, do you make it happen? Do you help create it to happen? Or are you able to glimpse the future of what's going to happen when you get that idea? The reason I ask is, when we got here, I told Nat, this is going to be like golf. With me, when I play golf, I don't know what kind of golf balls they sell me, but they're magnetized to water. When we got here, there's water all around us, but I thought, this is a real cool place. We won't bother anybody. It's scenic. But I told Nat, I said, you watch, the copter, the drone's going to go in the water. Sure enough, we made the shot, and the thing, as soon as it lifted off, it shot over to the water. So we don't have the drone anymore. Ah, some days the swamp gets you, and some days you get the swamp. Today the swamp got the drone. And to top it all off, I tossed down my phone to chase after the drone. And I don't know if you can see that cracked it up too so not a good day for flying and telling a story is it when it comes to getting a shot there's always an option see you JC out hey JC here if you like that video make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here also we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well and if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place plus a group of people to support you 
check this out over here. Give it a click.